Welcome back. It's Friday night again in Raleigh. So it's time for the Aztec Dummy weekend of fun and uh, update of projects. And this week we are getting back to uh, part two of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, we are, um, I am, there's no we here really, it's just me. I am concentrating on the two rocket figures. They uh, are easy enough to paint because... You can, you know, kind of mix up your paint for one and do the other one at the same time. So let's show you where I am. Okay, here you can see I have roughed in some more colors. Uh, last time you saw I had the uh, jumpsuit roughed in and the uh, some basic colors laid down. Well, what I've continued with that tonight and where we're at is I have laid in some basic fur colors using some pictures of real raccoons and of the CG raccoon as a uh, basis for my coloring. And you can see it's just rough, it's just slopped in. And then what I'm going to do on top of these, much like I did for Groot, is I roughed in basic colors and then I went in and refined them. Now I'm going to be, you know, putting some highlights, There's especially like the rings on the tail, that isn't there yet. There's blacks, there's whites, but there's an underlying ginger brownish color to uh, Rocket's fur. He's not strictly a black and white animal like, uh, you know, like a zebra or anything like that. So uh, there's some underlying browns, and what I'm going to do is lay these mass, uh, these big block colors in, and then go back in and refine. It's day two. It's Saturday morning, and uh, getting back on the raccoon bandwagon getting back onto the working and uh, you can see I did some more refining last night everything's starting to take shape still playing around with the final finish on the fabric say that five times real fast find final finish on fabric um, trying to find out the right combination of washes and dry brushing to make that fabric really pop uh, the fur I'm kind of liking the fabric is one thing the fur is another another F word alliteration for you um, you can see that the the tail is looking nice. I think really that adding that uh, brown in there really spiced it up. It was looking a little bit too monochromatic in simple grays. Um, what I've done there is taken a gray dry brushing over the brown arms, and I think that's really bringing out the uh, the br the gray fur, and then how it uh, fades into the uh, dark gray to black hands or paws uh, I think that's really working out nicely and then once I get all of the fur in and get that get myself happy with those colors then I'll go in and do the final hard edge touching up of the you know the backpack and the and the the jumpsuit and things like that but I feel, find myself overlapping um, I paint a hard edge on one of them and then when I do this the fur it ends up overlapping it so I'm gonna let the the fur lead the way and then I'll come back in and do the the hard edge work on the uh, on the costume and the same thing with the small one and you can see here with the gun in hand the uh, the face on the small one I'm less happy with but I think that has a lot to do with there just being less detail in the smaller version so I'm gonna have to make sure that I carry some of those color choices from the big one down to the small one and then here's the uh, the large gun I'm enjoying how the uh, the paints the different metallics that I'm using are, uh, are are shining in different levels I've got uh, more of a copper or not a copper but a, a bronze on some parts and more of a aluminum on some other parts like this scope up here or laser cider or whatever is noticeably more um, uh, silver than the rest of it so playing with some washes on that too and then putting some of the Comart uh, smoke down into the into the uh, uh, recesses of the barrels to make them uh, make make the uh, contrast stand out even more and then what I'll do is I'll probably take some flat black um, Tamiya uh, on an airbrush and like you know do some carbon scoring around the muzzles and things like that but it's coming along nicely and uh, 
I should be able to wrap these up this weekend, I'm hoping. Here's a, a fresh look at Rocket with his gun in hand. Uh, you really get a sense of where the colors are going now. And now that uh, I've got the base colors in, I can start uh, uh, just zeroing in on certain aspects. Like I may go in and do the head next or do the arms next and get them completely finished. Okay, I just came back from watching the movie yet again, uh, which, like I said, it's one of my favorite movies, so I don't have any problem with that. And I'm hitting my brain trying to figure out why I can't get this rocket to look like the one in the movie. Now, I know, obviously, the one in the movie is fur, and uh, this is vinyl simulating fur. So, yeah, given that obvious um, limitation, I'm trying to figure out what's what's not clicking and I realized it's the sculpt of the fur uh, rocket and I, and I went back and looked at there's a very good uh, set of references in the uh, one of the making of featurettes uh, that show very close and very good uh, reference pictures of rocket in this orange uniform and what's killing me is the uh, the fur that is sculpted on this kit is not the same consistency as the fur on Rocket. You can see the hair on his arms here is much longer, uh, wavier even, whereas the the CG version of Rocket, the hair was very much shorter, sort of like how it's sculpted on the forearm there, not this big wavy stuff. And the uh, same, and uh, the hair around the face and the hair on the legs is is way too long. It should be almost very, it should be very tight to the body, almost like that. And the, and the tail is uh, way fatter and um, it's way thicker than it should be. And uh, what I'm trying to do is make my hair look like theirs and not... Uh, fall, not uh, not being true to the vinyl that uh, it's sculpted like, so um, I got to back up and punt and try to do uh, try to get some uh, fluffiness into what's going on here, into what is essentially a non-fluffy or a thin a uh, I don't know what the best way to describe this is, but the the the, the way the hair is falling is falling on the kit is not consistent with the actual character in the movie so that's why it's not looking i'm trying to get all the colors in the right place but the consistencies are not matching up uh, also things like uh, these pads and the buckles and all that are sticking out way too thick um it's just not matching up so uh, I'm going to try to try to make the best of both worlds here and, and just get it closer. But that arm there is, uh, uh, the term I would use is it's too muscular. It needs to be scrawnier and thinner. And I think the bulk of the hair or the bulk of the arm is what's throwing off the, the look of them. And I wish they could have found some way of getting that canvas uh, pattern into uh, its fabric here because that really would have made that look a whole lot better. So at the end of Saturday night, uh, this is where we are with the big rocket. Um, I'm to the point of almost overworking things, so it'd be best to step back and uh, let him breathe for a while and then come back to him tomorrow. Uh, the most air, most obvious area that needs done is his backpack. Uh, the clothing is starting to take shape. The um, hair is looking good. Uh, I still need to work on his uh, holster there, or whatever that pad is. That color and the color of the shoulder pads, I'm still not happy with. And this, much the same boat for the smaller version. Um, I have more work on his face to do, but it's a good it's a good stopping point. The guns are in good shape, and uh, it's a good stopping point for Saturday night. And we'll pick this up again tomorrow. 
It is Sunday uh, shortly after noon, and I'm back at Rocket Control Center. And uh, what I've done is I think I'm on the verge of, uh, I'm happy with the, the fur, but I'm on the verge of overworking it. So what I'm going to do is uh, put it aside. I need to um, spray a flat coat on it because I think that's what's throwing me. I see all these gloss coats, and what it is is uh, the Comart uh, paints that I have used as a wash to kind of get down into the fur, and it's coming up glossy, and that's throwing me. It sh you know, fur should be natural, should be flat. He's not particularly greasy uh, furred, and uh, when he, and that also help uh, make the glossy eyes and nose and teeth pop. Uh, when everything else is flattened. So what I want to do is kind of hit this with a flat coat and uh, give it a good chance to dry. It doesn't look like I'm going to uh, get this finished this weekend only because I'm also working on another project at the same time that's uh, eaten into more of the time and um, I'm not devoting the whole weekend solely to uh, finishing up a rocket. And most specifically... Uh, the backpacks on both. Uh, I've got the uh, the shoulder pads and some of the other uh, padding on his uh, jumpsuit almost to where I like it, but I really need to go back and do a little bit more research on colors and whatnot for the backpacks on both of them, and specifically the ball, which I think is blue, uh, but I need to uh, take care of both of those and if I rushed it through just to get it done for the weekend I don't think I would be doing it the justice it deserves so um, also I think what I'm going to do is uh, after spraying this with a flat coat it'll give me a better uh, it'll lock in kind of these colors that are there and it'll give me a better base to do some last minute highlighting um, dry brushing over some of the high spots like bringing out the whites in his tail and around his face that right now is just getting muddy because it's going over top of paint that's already there and if I um, lock him in then I'll have a clean base to start from and as a last minute surprise I was thinking a great deal about this uh, yesterday and really I'm only down to figuring out what's the best attachment method but I've got this handy brush that I've been using to clean off my desk and I've noticed that it would make awfully good uh, whiskers for Rocket and that was another thing that his face is missing beyond the fact of the uh, the fact that it's molded in fur is that his whiskers were very expressive and if I could find a way of gluing in or gluing on whiskers to the sides of his wee bitty nose that won't be too obtrusive um, and I can say I'm down to figuring out whether uh, CA is going to be the best solution. You can see these things are. Ironically, they're whisker thin. Uh, whether it will be CA or whether it will be uh, five minute or one minute epoxy or whether it'll just be Elmer's glue, I think the problem is it needs to be something that's got a very quick setup time so that I can, you know, plant a few of these and be done and not, you know, stuck holding it for hours on end. And uh, at the same time, not stick out too much to lay pretty flat against his uh, schnoz there. So that's uh, something else I want to get to have a good uh, flat base on to uh, before I start. But that's going to be the absolute last thing I do because um, uh, I'm going to have to be very happy with how the paint rest of the face is painted before I do that. So let's go hit this with uh, this and the Wii, the Wii Rocket, the Mini Rocket. Uh, hit these with uh, some flat coat and set them aside to dry the guns I'm mostly happy with I think they're pretty much done uh, I, I might put a little bit more streaking and some more scoring on some of these uh, uh, standy outy bits but I think they're mostly done okay one last final report for Sunday afternoon uh, it's first of all it's beautiful out it's 70 degrees and first weekend in February second weekend in February so uh, how strange is that? But uh, here is Rocket with the coat of, of uh, flat on it. And I really think that helped because it knocked down some of the glossiness, which is what flat's supposed to do. But it knocked down some of the stuff that was distracting me uh, in the fur. And 
what it's going to allow me to do now is go back over one last time with a highlight, a uh, very dry, dry brush, just to hit the topmost, um, the topmost standing out fur and uh, get some highlights on that. And it, uh, it kind of unifies some of the uh, splotchiness of the orange on the jumpsuit. Um, I still need to go in and finish up that backpack, like I've said before, and do some highlights. But I think what this has done is uh, it's given me a good uh, unified base from which to work. Okay, if you hadn't seen Star-Lord in the last few reports, that was because I had stripped him back down to bare vinyl. Um, with the exception of his head, which I am still quite happy with. Um, but what was happening was uh, it was not drying. Uh, the uh, paint and the uh, different coats on it still felt kind of tacky. And I realized that I had not put the... The reason was is I had not uh, put this uh, adhesion... Well, I put the adhesion promoter on, but I had not put on this self-etching primer, this green primer that I put under Groot and Rocket. And it's made all the difference in the world because I could tell already that the primer is dry and uh, uh, it's ready to be painted. It uh, And I wasn't happy with the colors and it was my first vinyl kit and a lot of ifs and excuses. But it came down to wanting to repaint it, um, putting in some of the techniques I had learned on Groot and Rocket. So uh, I decided to strip him back down and repaint. Um, like I said, outside of the head, which I like. But uh, that's why. And now that I know what I know, I can go back in and, and, and repaint him much quicker and much better. So he will join Rocket and Groot, and uh, that will be the subject of getting everything finished for one last volume of Guardians of the Galaxy, which will be next week. Uh, same YouTube, same channel, same computer. Uh, but... I went and added a touch more moss after watching the movie again yesterday. Uh, I added the touch more moss on Groot. And the way I did it this time, rather than glue, was I sprayed the flat uh, finish over it. And then while the flat finish was still wet, I just sprinkled some moss where I wanted to go. Now, uh, once this is good and dry, I can go in with a brush and kind of brush out the moss so that I don't want to keep so that I don't end up with too much moss. But I realized after watching the film again that he had more moss on him than I had remembered. So uh, that's why I did that. But uh, like I say, one more report and I'll have all of these mess, I'll have all of these Guardians of the Galaxy done. And maybe next week I'll get back to John Christopher, or Christopher Johnson, and um, some other kits that have been percolating and needing to get done. But one last state of the rocket, and uh, this is how the wee rocket looks. Get under there without uh, without his gun, he looks just mad. Once you give him the gun, he looks a little bit better. Hello, world. I'm your 